The human DNA yield uh, from an ancient bone or tooth was uh, in most cases lower than four or five percent human, the rest was just bacteria. And that was just uh, a major obstacle in the, in the field and still is. So uh, we were thinking how to, how, to, how to improve it or how to solve it. And then came the idea or the knowledge that actually inside the skull, so this is a piece of, uh, of a skull, in the middle of that, it's the inner ear region, which is uh, very, very dense, extremely dense, and it's called petrous after because it's, uh, it's coming from the word uh, stone. We were working, we were hoping to improve it by, by uh, doubling or tripling the, the yield, and suddenly we got up to 100 or more than 100 times, which is more than we ever imagined. This work falls into a, a rapidly developing new field called paleogenomics. And uh, the aim in this field is to sequence not just small bits of DNA from ancient individuals, but whole genomes. And the great thing about sequencing a whole genome is you really get very deep information about the characteristics of an ancient person, or which populations he or she most resembles in the modern world. So uh, it's, it's really opened up a whole new vista of, of deep information about the past. Well, yeah, we checked for the particular allele that, um, that uh, indicates uh, the onset of lactose tolerance. Uh, the main question is when, when in Europe did it become uh, predominant as it is nowadays? When you work systematically with uh, archaeological time series and you control for time, then you can really look at, at what stage of your, of your sequence between uh, 6000 BC to 1000 BC it, it appears for the first time. And that was the big discovery that we, we, we are capable of seeing exactly at the late Bronze Age, the biological or genetic capacity to digest milk uh, was relatively recent in European prehistory, whereas the use of milk products such as uh, um, uh, using of uh, cheese, potentially yogurt, anything that is fermented has been going on at least since the uh, middle or even early Neolithic. The first human genome sequence was published uh, at the turn of the century, uh, only 14 years ago, and that cost in the region of two or three hundred million dollars and took about, took about 10 years. Now, if you have good DNA, and uh, you have the machine at your fingertips, you can sequence a human genome in a matter of days, and it'll cost probably something like a couple of thousand dollars. So it's, a, it's an amazing trajectory of technological improvement that we're on at the minute. So I don't know if you've seen the film Gattaca, uh, where, where the guy sticks his thumb in the machine and his genome sequence comes out, and that was science fiction uh, 10, 15 years ago. Um, it's, no, it's almost science fact now.